Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to our worship service this morning. A special welcome to the cadets. It looks awesome seeing so many of you guys up here. Special welcome to all who are visiting amongst us, especially if you're here for the cadets or also for Amar's family. We ask you to join us for coffee and the fellowship hall after for refreshments, a chance to get to know each other. I'd also like to welcome Pastor Jack to our pulpit this morning. Also a reminder that <clears throat> the Watoto Children's Choir is on Tuesday evening at 6.30 here in the church. We're looking forward to seeing many of you there. Good morning. Cadets didn't want me to sit there with them. Intimidate, <laughs> intimidating. We'll have a chat in a few minutes, okay? Before we get to that, we're going to invite Amar to come to the front and uh, we're going to just share a few words about Ministry of Refugees of Hope. So Omar, come on up. So just to calm his fears a little bit, I told him that I have to do this every Sunday and so there's no reason to get nervous. Um, uh, the words will just kind of come natural. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, Amar, um, we want to welcome you here this morning and your Thank family. You. And uh, you. maybe you can just introduce your family so that those of us who have not met them uh, have an opportunity to see who they are. Okay. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Amar Hamel, and my family is over there. So, Omen. Thank you. My mom, my, my mom, Raja, my daughter, Sarah, my wife, Maida, other daughter, Clara. So we are really happy, all of us, to be here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. So you are living? We are living in Caledonia. Still, it's a nice still, area. Yeah. We love it. So yeah, uh, and I'm working with the elevator company. It's called the Brock Elevator in St. Catharines. Uh, I started with them in 2020 because we came here in August 2019 after our Lord Jesus Christ opened that door for us. After many years, like five years and a half in Turkey, because we left, I'm from Iraq, we are from Iraq, so I left my country, uh, East Cap from my country in 2014 with my family. And then we stayed there five years and I can say like five months till we came here in Canada. Thanks, Lord, for that. Okay. Yeah. So you have asked uh, Refugees of Hope to help sponsor your sister-in-law. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening there? Yes, I asked them. And honestly, my sister-in-law, she was living in Iraq too, but her husband, uh, he was working south of Iraq and he changed his ID. He used another ID, it was a fake ID, because he has, I can say it's a normal name for us, but it's a weird name for them. His name is Dia Israel, so just imagine if you live there with this name. Anyway, he changed his ID just to keep working, supporting his family. But one day he went out to his job and never came back. So all of us, like, believe they know what's happened with him, and they figured out about his real ID because he changed it. He changed his ID from Dia Israel to the Dia Ismail. So Ismail, we can say it's, it's a Muslim name. They can accept it over there, but they can't accept Israel. So that was the reason, I believe, for my brother-in-law, like to losing him and then to force his wife and kids. She has two daughters and one boy to leave Iraq and live in Turkey. Till I hope in Jesus' name, they can, like, we can bring them here and see them here with us and have the same opportunity we had it before and we still have that opportunity. Thanks, Lord, for that. We are living a good life over here. Uh, my wife, she is still going to the English classes. I'm working, I'm still approving myself even more and more with my friends. My girls are doing at school. Clara, she's a grade 10, Sarah, grade eight. Next year, she will join with her uh, sister. She will go to the high school. So that is a really, really a big and amazing challenge for our life. Thanks, Lord, for that. Just as an aside, this is, um, we didn't talk about this, but the name Israel, of course, we know as uh, being the name given to Jacob. Yes. 
as the father of the Jews. Yes. The Ishmaelites, yes. which it, is Jacob's uncle, mm -hmm. are the father of the Muslims. Yes. Today. Yes. And in Arabic. So, so just. Sorry. There's a play on names here. He changed his name from Israel to Ishmael so that he could live comfortably in a Muslim country. Yes, but in Arabic language, we, we can say Ismail with right. S. It's not Ishmael. If you say Ishmael, they will, they will still keep thinking it's a Jewish name. Right. So that is, that is, that is the difference that happened. So yeah, and then they moved to Turkey three years ago. And then I asked the, the committee here if they can sponsor her and help her with her kids. Because I told her, like, she has two daughters. The, the oldest one, she's 23 years old now. And the youngest one, she's 20 years old. And a boy, his name is David. So just imagine David Israel living in the Middle East. So <laughs> even, even, even they are in Turkey, he's 10 years old. Even in Turkey, like, he couldn't go to school with his name. So we have a church. It's our church. I, like, we've been there before. We served there before. It's a refugee church, and our pastor, he's from Germany. And he has a big heart, like all of you here, guys. And the church keep helping my sister-in-law, like with the food, sometimes with the money. Even the youngest girl, you know, she's working with, uh, like, in, it's, it's like, I can say it's a similar, like, a Tim Hortons here, you know, all these, like, uh, cafeterias or something, but the owner from my big bag home. So they still keeping hiding her because it's not legal to work there, especially if you're a refugee. Okay. Tell us a little bit about where your sister-in-law is and what it might take to bring her here. She's like, all of them, they are in one province, it's called Yaluva. We've been there before. Uh, it's between Istanbul. It's, it's a close, it's close to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And she is living there. She is living at a similar place like we lived there before. It's a small apartment, like it's only one bedroom, including the bathroom. and. You know, I told a pastor and like the church still helping her, plus the youngest girl, she, she found a little bit job. She can support herself and mom too. And I hope, I hope in Jesus' name, they can be here because she, they got approval from the Canadian government here and the Canadian embassy over there. It's called the G number. We had it before too. That's, that's make a big difference for them life because without that proof, Turkey decided to send them back to Iraq. But when they got that proof from the government here, they're really safe till, till be here. So we hope that, we are looking for that in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. So we'll remember Refugees of Hope and Amar's family situation both here in, in Turkey and our time of prayer a little later in the service. I want to thank you so much. Thank you so much. We Pastor. pray that God will continue to bless your family here. And that, thank you uh, your so much. Maybe Everyone here well. in his holy name. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank Thanks, you. Pastor.
these words as our call to worship. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings. Let's come to God in a moment of personal silent prayer, asking God to bless our worship and that he may lead us by his spirit. We confess that our help is in the name of the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Congregation, grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I saw holy forever on there. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, so you, you probably need to sit down now. <laughs> While you are sitting, I'm going to ask some other people to stand for a moment because we want to welcome a new family into our church family. And that are the Deckers, Dan and Amanda, and their children are Dean, Wyatt, Caden, and Seth. And you've got three with you, and I guess one's in the nursery. I really don't like to do this, but I know that they want you to stand so they can see who you are. And I'm looking forward to visiting with you later today, so trust that uh, your day will be a blessing among us and that we will make them feel warm and welcome in our midst as well. Let's come to God in time of prayer of confession. Gracious God and merciful Father, you created us in your image. You created us with a mind to know and with a heart to love you and our neighbor. And even with a will to serve you, though we can fail miserably at that. So we confess that too often our knowledge is lacking, our love is inconsistent, and our obedience is imperfect. We pray you forgive us and help us day by day to grow in your likeness and free us from sin and guilt and redeem us in your tender love. That we may know what it is to live in freedom and in truth. Help us to do that by your spirit. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 130 as assurance of God's grace. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. And then a few verses further. Put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. And that's a promise not just to Israel, but to all of us today as well. Let's respond in song.
Let's hear God's word as a guide for gracious and thankful living. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to that which is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, I invite uh, Chuck and the cadets to do their presentation. Get that's attention. Oh boy, that wasn't good. <laughs> Should we try that again? Get that's attention. What? what is your motto? For Jesus. What is your verse? What is your code? What is your pledge? And what is the pledge to the flag of Canada? Cadets. This year our theme was <clears throat> rooted and grounded. Our theme verse was from Ephesians 3, 17 and 18. The focus of the year was being in the word of God um, rather than being distracted by the world around us. I was chatting with some of the counselors this past week and we were talking about how fast the year went. But as we look back at the year, we did quite a bit of things. I'd like to share a few highlights with you now. We started the year off with a lot of returning cadets and some ambitious grade fours. And we ended up with having 40 cadets signed up. 
Our annual camping kickoff in September was great with beautiful weather, and we had some great experiences. Um, in years past, the counselors would look after cooking and cleaning for the cadets. Well, that changed this year. We assigned the cadets and counselors to different groups, and each group was responsible for one meal to cook and one meal to clean. And that worked out really well so that we all kind of share the workload. Saturday morning, the cadets learned how to fillet a fish. And later in that afternoon, we cooked that, and it was very good. Um, grades seven and eight went off to do some clay shooting in the afternoon, off-site. And the grade four and grade six did uh, pellet gun shooting, so that was fun. Um, Saturday we or uh, Sunday we cleaned up and went to the service at the church on the same campground and that was good. Um, we recruited some new counselors and they were uh, they fit in really well. So thank you to uh, Ryan Haig, Albert Bentham, and Tim Zanstra for joining us this year. It's been great. In the fall, the Jarvis Ministerial asked us to participate in the Re uh, Remembrance Day service, and it was good to have the boys involved in that parade. Um, we also went to the Jarvis Fire Hall, and it was interesting learning about the fire trucks, and uh, the boys seemed to enjoy themselves there. <clears throat> some of the crafts that we made, the boys made this year, grade four and grade six, made some cornhole boards. They're in display in the, in the Fellowship Hall. Grade five made a charcuterie board, and they also made a, a shuffleboard. Uh, grade seven made a, a backyard game called Mookie, Mookie, I think it's called. And then later on, they built a, a bat with a lathe, so that was fun. And grade eight, they built their own knife, so they took a, an old skill saw blade, they cut a blade out of that, and then they actually made a handle, so that was uh, good fun for them. The Cub Car night, well, Cub Car night was once again a great night. Um, this year we opened it up to the gems and the entire congregation, so if you miss it, you're welcome to come again this year. We're going to do the same thing. When we got back to the Christmas break, we focused on the snow derby, learning the different skills, uh, including fire building, lashing, cliff rescue, first aid, and axemanship. Uh, Jarvis did a great job, and we had the top two teams at the snow derby. Really happy how the boys did this year. That was great. February, the grade seven and eights did uh, the mother and son night again, and it was good to focus on chivalry for a night, and the, the cadets, I think, enjoyed it. Um, yesterday, we had our cadetry. The cadets did really well. It's a little bit different than the snow derby, where we mix all the groups from all the churches all together, so you're with people with all different churches in one group, as opposed to in snow derby, you're with all of Jarvis. So it's more of an intermingling day, but it was a, it was a good day. Um, as I look back, it's really neat to see how God has blessed this program through the commitment of the parents, the cadets and the counselors, as well as the different volunteers when needed. So thank you to all of you as well. Um, thank you to the counselors for your weekly pre pre preparation and patience at times with these cadets. It's appreciated. It's been a great year. Thank you for your support. God has blessed us and continues to do so. So thank you. I think we have the litany now. This year's cadet theme is rooted and grounded based on Ebene or, um, Ephesians 3, 17, 18. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is love of Christ. We as cadets are committed to being rooted and grounded in our faith and in, following, in the following litany we look at our founda foundation in Christ and the extent of his love for us.
As our theme verse was Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, may it also be our prayer for the cadets. As the cadets find their seats, I'm going to dismiss the boys and girls that are going to go to Sunday school, and thereafter the elders or the deacons will come forward for the offering for church ministries and for the local de- uh, cadets program.
as we prepare to um, come to God in prayer, just want to highlight a couple of things uh, for you and for our consideration as uh, we remember our church family in the coming week. Neil Janssen's has been experiencing some discomfort and after he had gone for tests, the doctors have found a large mass in his abdomen and uh, we want to remember Neil and Allie as they will not only undergo further tests this coming week, but in all that they will have to face, committing them to God's care and to the doctors who will do the work. Walter Tristige was released from ICU yesterday morning and is now on a step down on a ward. We want to remember Hans and Mary Box as they grieve the passing of Hans's brother, John, in uh, British Columbia. So let's join our thoughts, our hearts in prayer. Gracious God and Father, we want to thank you for the blessings that we have just witnessed with our cadet program and the various uh, ministries that they have engaged in in the course of this past year. Thank you for the leaders, for Chuck and his team and for all that provide assistance for these young men to grow strong in their love and knowledge of who you are. What a blessing it is to see them and to give their testimony before us this morning. As you have blessed them, you have blessed so many of us in the past week and we want to acknowledge that you are the great provider and care for all of our needs. We thank you, Lord, that we could have Amar and his family with us this morning representing the refugees of hope. And through his testimony, we recognize that there are so many living in camps and not having the freedom that we are so often taking for granted in this land in which we live. Lord, we pray that uh, his sister-in-law may soon be released to be able to come to this country as well. We pray for them as they are in Turkey and as they are uh, living under a form of oppression, not being able to work or just visibly being able to acknowledge that they are children of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, be with Amar as he continues his work for those that uh, work behind the scenes for refugees of hope and for all that are looking forward to coming to a land that is free from all the oppression that we find in so many countries around the world. We want to pray for our members of our church family. We want to welcome Dan and Amanda and their children. Lord, as we pray for them, we pray for others among us who are recent to this congregation that we may feel at home and welcome. We pray that we may also open our arms and our facilities and our homes to each other as we do that. May they also be able to experience and express their gifts in the way that you have entrusted those gifts to them as they work also in this congregation. We lift before you the needs of Neil and Ali as they face uncertainty in uh, the tests that will come this week, Tuesday, through a biopsy. We pray that that may go well. We know that you are the great physician and that you will hear and answer our prayers for them, that you will not only lift them up but that in time, if it be your will, to provide the healing and uh, the removal of that tumor in his body. We pray that you grant them also the assurance of knowing that you will be with them during this difficult time and that you also assure them of your presence. We thank you that Walter could uh, leave ICU and we pray not only for him but also for Henny and for Brother Rick that uh, they may continue to experience even under doctor's care uh, healing and restoration to be able to take up somewhat normalcy again in their, in their lives. We pray, Lord, for Hans and Mary Box, that you will uh, surround them with comfort and assure them of your presence even in this time of loss. And Lord, it reminds so many of us of having lost loved ones, and we pray that you also provide for each of us as any death will remind us of the, the loved ones that have been taken from us. Lord, we want to thank you for the gifts that we are able to bring for the ongoing ministry of this church we pray, Lord, for the continued blessings as they are being used, whether it's for cadets or other programs of ministry here locally, or as we also support our denominational programs. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings in our congregation that we know are a gift from your hand. And now, too, Lord, we want to thank you for your word. 
a word that has spoken to the cadets in the course of this year that we're going to reflect on together in a few moments. As we open that word, may your spirit enlighten and embolden us to continue to know who you are in our lives. Accept our thanks for that word. Bless us by your spirit and receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21, a prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray, I pray that you, out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit 
in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know the love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Micah. Cadets and friends in Christ Jesus, our Lord, you just heard the theme repeated, and I'm going to say it one more time if it's on the PowerPoint. And if you have your Bibles open, I suggest maybe you keep it open because I will deal with this passage as it unfolds. The text is, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And I want to suggest to you that the theme of this passage is that the church of Christ must strive to know the love of Jesus. Well, that's a tall order, isn't it? And I want to begin by telling you cadets, and there's going to be a test after today's message, okay? Not for you, for the rest of the congregation. I want to begin by telling you that this is a prayer. It's a great prayer. It's a prayer that is for every person in the world, even those that are not yet saved. Because we have to come to know what the heart of this prayer is and what it means to be rooted in the love and in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, what's so important about prayer? Anybody who... Know an answer to that question? What's so important about prayer? Yeah. All right. Somebody want to add to that? Why do we pray? I think your answer is right. Somebody else? Go ahead, Micah. To talk to God, yeah. And you know what? Go ahead. To, yeah, you know what? It's really important that we talk to God so that we can have a relationship with him. And we always pray in the name of Jesus, right? So prayer is important for us because we talk to God. It tells us about how we can approach God about the things that we should pray for. And it reminds us that we are his children. We are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, why did the Apostle Paul write this prayer? Because back in the day, there were no cadets and there were no congregations like we have today, although they were beginning to form. But this prayer, and if you go back in the section before the text that we read together a moment ago, talks about Gentiles. Anybody know what Gentiles are? All right, I'll tell you. So before, before Jesus came, the people that lived in synagogue, or went to synagogues to worship God, were mostly Jewish people. So the people that were saved in the Old Testament were people who belonged to God. That was the Jewish people, Israel. And the apostle Paul was chosen by God to do something very special. And God called him to speak to churches that hadn't yet been established, but to speak to people in different places from Israel. And the people he spoke to were Gentiles. Anybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile. So what, what are we? What are we? We're humans. Yeah, that's for sure. Are we Jews or are we, what are we? We're Gentiles, right. So here's something really interesting. 
Now, we need to remember that when Jesus came and died on the cross, he didn't just die for the Jewish people, though that's where he began with they were his people. He came to save his people. But he died also for other people that were not yet part of the Jewish household of faith. And that's you and me. Gentiles. We're Gentiles. The reason why Paul wrote this letter is because we need to do something to ourselves or about ourselves to be able to tell others about Jesus. And this prayer has six steps. At least that's how I've identified it. Six steps that we're going to look at that are taken out of this text. And I want to look at them each one by one. So the first step is that we may be strengthened through the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? I'll let somebody else answer. For Who's the Holy Spirit? God. God is the Holy Spirit. But does the Holy Spirit have something to do with you and me today? Anybody? Come on, some of you older guys know this. What's the Holy Spirit do today? Yep. I, my hearing is not so good, so you really, because the people want to hear you too. The Holy Spirit connects us with God. That's a great answer. You see, when Jesus went back to heaven, and in a few weeks we're going to have Ascension Day, Jesus went back to heaven. When he went back to heaven, he gave us something that he promised us, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps us to come to know who God is. Now, that's really important. The Apostle Paul thinks it's very important that we know who the Holy Spirit is because if we know who the Holy Spirit is, we can also be equipped with the Holy Spirit to do what God wants us to do. And what did I say a moment ago about reaching other people? Who are they called? What are they called? Besides the Jews, who are they? Who are we? Gentiles. Gentiles. The rest of you are part of this. You know, I may be looking at them, but how many of you know who Jesus is? All right. I think every hand went up. You know how we know who Jesus is? Through the Holy Spirit. So there's a book we just read from. Mike had just read a passage from that book called the Bible. The Bible is the Holy Spirit's gift to the church. Does that make sense? And the Bible is also the Holy Spirit's gift to us. So in this prayer, when we talk about being strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we are really asking God to help us to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be what we need to be for Gentiles that don't yet know who Jesus is. You know what the gifts of the Spirit are? Did you memorize this? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You do you know that? Do you guys know that memory verse? All right, you're going to learn it this week, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying we want to be strengthened in the Holy Spirit in these gifts so that we can share the story about Jesus to other people. The second thing that Paul talks about here in our text is that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. We got some pretty big words in here. And this word that I want to think about for a moment is faith. Faith is a gift from the Holy Spirit. It's not one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. Faith is given us by the Holy Spirit to understand the word of God. And the most important thing that Paul wants us to learn in this passage is that when we understand the word of God, we have to tell other people about it. What do you think about that? That's a tough job, right? And maybe, maybe we all kind of think a little bit, well, that's why we hire pastors to talk about who God is. But that's not true. That shouldn't be true. All of us have a responsibility to think about and talk about what our job is to tell other people. Guys, you've got to listen up here because, you know, if these people are going to have a test, they're going to test you. So the gift of the Holy Spirit is to strengthen us, but to help us to understand what that gift is that we are asked to have our faith strengthened. So faith is something that we have, but we can't see it. Right? And sometimes when we ask God for 
Faith, what are we really asking for? We're asking him to help us better understand his word and his will for our lives. That's what faith does. Faith is asking God to help us better understand his word. How we can be better people in this world. So think about your faith as a means by which the Apostle Paul in this text helps us to understand what it means to be rooted and established in God's love. What's number three? Ah, there we go. You can answer this question better than I can because you've been studying this text the whole year, right? We are, can you say it with me? We are rooted and established in love. Wow. What does that mean? You don't know? You've studied this the whole year? Mr. Gibbons. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to talk about it a little bit here. That's why we're doing this today. You know what it means to be rooted, right? When you take a plant, well, we have not really live plants. So what, what happens when we take a plant that has some spindly little roots on it? What do we do? We put it in the ground, in the, ground, in the soil, right? And we watch it grow. How does it grow? You water it, soil, sun. By the way, tomorrow, we've got to watch out for the sun, right? Be careful. Don't look at the sun. So a plant needs soil and water and sun. And maybe sometimes the plant needs to have somebody to take care of it, you know, hold the dirt around it, maybe take out the extra shoots that the plant doesn't need to grow. It needs pruning, right? So we too, we are rooted and grounded in something. Doesn't mean our feet are planted in the dirt so we'll grow. No, we are rooted in something else. What are we rooted in? In Christ, in God's word, in the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead us. So if we are rooted and we are grounded in the word of God, in Jesus, what does that mean for us as Christians? What does Jesus want us to express in our lives? Well, what's the next point on the list? It's that four. We don't have a four. We do have a four. That we may be able to grasp the dimensions of Christ's love. So, in the text that we just read a moment ago, it talks about how long, how wide, how deep, and how high is the love of Christ. Did you know that? Did you know that? And is there an end to that love? So let me, let me put it to you like this. If you think about east and west, if you go east... You just travel east, will you ever come to west? No, you'll always be going east, right? You can circle the earth thousands of times and you'll never come to west because you're always going back east. It's a circle, it's endless. Or think about space. Have we mastered the end of space? No, space is, it's called infinitum, right? And isn't it amazing that God created that space? And when I think about depths, how deep can we go? Even if we go all the way through the earth to the other side and keep on going, we'll never come back to where we were because it's endless. Well, the Apostle Paul is trying to say that the love of Jesus is so big, so great, that we'll never find the end. We'll never be able to fully understand what it is. Now, you've got some of that love living in you. Oh, yes. Don't give me those strange-looking eyes. You've got some of that love living in you. And you want that love to grow. That's what it means to be rooted and to be ground in faith. You want that love to grow so that you can share that love with other people. I can't tell you how important this is because it's so important for us to know the love of Jesus. And we want him to live in our lives every day. To be to other people what he wants us to be. Okay, so remember that love has no end. 
And we have to grow in that love. And then number five says that we may know that his love surpasses knowledge. What's knowledge? Stuff you got in your head, right? Yeah. Reading a book gives you knowledge. Going to school gives you knowledge. Coming to church gives you knowledge. And I know sometimes it can be hard to sit there and listen to a whole sermon. But knowledge is something that we all have to grow up with. And it means that you go to school and you learn, right? To gain knowledge. It means that you go to church and learn more about who Jesus is. We gain knowledge. But I want to tell you something because this word knowledge is rooted in a verse that I want to read for you from 1 Corinthians 13. And it says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels... But do not have love. I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, and now listen, and if I have all knowledge, if I'm the smartest person on earth, which I'm not, but if we were, Paul says, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And then 30 says, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. So knowledge is something that we need to get while we're learning in school, in life, in all of our experiences. Why is that so important that we have knowledge? Because knowledge tells us how we ought to live. Knowledge tells us how we ought to relate to other people. Knowledge tells us what the Bible teaches and what we can gain from the Bible. Knowledge helps us to understand what God wants for our lives. Can you remember that, guys? Knowledge is what God wants us to help us understand what he wants for our lives. And then the last thing is that all believers may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. This one's a little bit beyond where the cadets are. And I want to conclude with this thought because I think it's important for all of us. And when I think about uh, the measure of the fullness of God before he has his wonderful doxology at the end, when I think about the measure of the fullness of God, we just simply can't wrap our brains on what that means. Being full of the knowledge of God means that I will be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. There is no end. The fullness of God helps me to live in eternity and still not learn everything that God knows. That's how big that is. And you know what, boys? We can't learn all of that in this life. In congregation, we can't have all the answers to every question in this life. Because God maybe hasn't revealed everything to us. We have millions of questions about why things are the way they are. And there are no answers to a lot of those questions. But what there is an answer for is that we may continue to have the fullness of the knowledge of God as we continue to grow in faith. What do you think about that? If we continue to grow in faith, we will also have a deeper understanding of the knowledge of God. And we want to pray for that. I'll pray for that in a moment, that we may continue to have that. But then the Apostle Paul says something really interesting. And it's a wonderful statement at the end of the verses that you've read together. And it says this. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work with him, within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. You and I can't do any of this alone. We need to trust that God will give us his spirit to strengthen us to be able to do what he calls us to do. I know this is getting a little long for you guys. It's hard to sit still that long, isn't it? But I want you to think about this for a moment. God has called you to be cadets. And a cadet is being more than just sitting in church on Sunday morning trying to listen to a sermon. A cadet, like all of us, 
are asked to do something with the talents and gifts that God has given to us. And you all have talents and gifts, cadets. You all have talents and gifts. This is not funny. This is not funny. This is serious. And you and I, together, are being able to use those gifts for God's service. And I'm sure that Chuck will tell you the next time you meet that you all have a responsibility, just like I do, and just like all these people do. And that's the promise that God gives us at the end of this passage of Scripture, a wonderful doxology, reminding us that we will never have to do it alone. He's always with us. He's with every one of you. And sometimes you may think God's far away. We all go through times like that. But trust me, he never leaves us even for a moment. He knows everything you think and do even before you do it. Oh yeah, he knows everything you do even before you do it. He knows us so intimately and the best thing of all is that he loves us more than we could ever love. God loves us more than we could ever love. And think about who he expressed that love through, Jesus. Jesus died on a cross for us. We just celebrated that a couple of weeks ago. He died on a cross for us to save us. I want you to remember that. That's what the Apostle Paul has in mind. We are saved. We all know who Jesus is. But there's a big world out there that hasn't yet heard about who Jesus is. You and I and all these people together have to tell the rest of the world about who this Jesus is. You remember that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for calling us, for redeeming us, that we might be rooted in the knowledge of who God is in our lives. Help us to recognize the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts that you, entr- and the gifts that you entrust to each of us. Lord, bless these young men. Provide for them as they grow up. Thank you for their families that are committed to having them come to know who Jesus is in their lives. And so be with all of us as we all take on the responsibility of knowing the full measure of who God is and what he has in store for us. We know that doesn't end just on this earth. It will continue to be the truth of what comes in the life hereafter. May that be our comfort and our hope. Go with us today and all the days of our lives, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
doxology after the benediction, I ask that you would wait until the cadets have left. Are you going to go out one way? You're going to go out this way, okay. So just remember, you can leave first. They have to wait. <laughs> Let's lift up our hearts to God and receive his blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with you all. Amen. <laughs>